get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the same And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders you've heard of and some you've never heard of. You know, P90X founder Tony Horton talks about, John, how he made um, money as a street mime. Before he sold hundreds of millions of dollars, he put his hat on the street, and that's how he made his food and rent money. Um, Baby Einstein founder Julie Clark talks about growing her company um, to $20 million with five employees, selling to Disney. The most impressive part was she beat cancer twice and kind of the journey. And Atari founder Nolan Bushnell talked about how when he was Steve Jobs' mentor, Steve offered him 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. The most impressive of everyone, John, is uh, Chris Atigeka. No one's ever heard of him. Most people haven't. He founded two nonprofits, two for-profits. He grew up in Uganda at seven years old. He became an orphan because both his parents died of AIDS. And he was the oldest of five children. He became the head of the household. His brother died on the way to the hospital, and that's why he started one of his nonprofits. Uh, just a, a crazy, amazing story, crazy in the most positive sense. He wore his first pair of shoes at 17, took his first flight at 22. He went out, speaks nine languages, and he went to the U.S. for college, went on to get his Ph.D. while running his companies. Amazing. Um, this episode is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And... At Rise25, we help B2B businesses connect to their Dream 100 clients and referral partners. And what we do is we create a systemized incoming referral. I'm talking to one of the godfathers of podcasting, by the way, who's been podcasting since 2005. But we create a systemized incoming referral pipeline, which generates ROI using a podcast. And um, it's been the best thing I've done for my business and my life. And it's much more personal for me because it's not just about your business. It's about you leaving a legacy. And it was inspired by my grandfather who was a Holocaust survivor, and his brother and him were in concentration camps in Nazi Germany, and they were the only members of their family to survive. And his words and legacy live on because of an interview the Holocaust Foundation did with him, which you can watch on my About page. So yes, podcasting will help your business, but it really, you don't realize how much of a legacy of knowledge it leaves. And um, so if you have questions, I think every business should have a podcast. Um, and I will say that before it was self-serving, John, but um, if you have questions, go to rise25.com or support at rise25media.com if you have questions. And I'm excited to introduce today's guest, John Jantz. Um, he's a marketing consultant, speaker, best-selling author. Um, check out all of his books. Um, we're going to talk about his latest one, but duct tape marketing, it's, it's legendary. You know, it's really um, up there with the best business books. And the referral engine, he wrote Duct Tape Selling, the commitment engine, SEO for growth, and the newest one, and whenever you're listening to this, it's the Self-Reliant Entrepreneur, and it's 366 daily meditations to feed your soul and grow your business. And he poured, what I love about books, John, everyone should buy this book. I'm going to get it on Audible for sure. It's like 30 plus years of wisdom and experience <laughs> to a book, and like, what do you pay like 20 or $30 really for your, your wisdom and you, you gleaning all this knowledge. So it's, it's a no brainer. Each page is meant to be read in a few minutes and it contains an inspiring quote followed by a reflection and then a challenging question. My favorite part is that challenging question. If you just put a challenging question, on every page worth the price of admission right there. Um, John has also been podcasting. Like I mentioned since 2005, check out duct tape marketing podcast. John, thanks for joining me. I always ask John, since it's Inspired Insider, two questions. One, what's been a low moment, a tough time? And then on the flip side, what's been a proud moment uh, for you? Um, what's been the lower moment, tough time in business? Well, um, when I first started my business, you know, I told you I kind of just went out and hustled whatever work I could get. Um, I, at I'll give you the short version of this, but at some point um, I received a um, grand jury uh, invitation to come speak in front of a grand jury that was investigating one of my clients for felony racketeering charges. Wow. Um, I, fortunately, you know, they just were going through their whole roster and talking to everybody. Fortunately, I didn't have anything uh, interesting to share, but 
Um, probably the low moment for me was that I knew that they were doing some things that were a little odd. <laughs> um, but I chose to kind of look the other way because, hey, you know, I was doing the work. I was being paid to do the work I did. Um, so that was really, in some ways, it was a low moment. Like a lot of people's low moments, it was a turning point as well because uh, you asked me why I decided to start working with small business owners. Um, that, was, uh, that was the point at which I said, yeah, that's, you know, I have to help people, not just... <laughs> not just get money. Um, and that was a point where I said, I'm, you know, I'm no longer going to work with anybody that I don't respect or trust or, you know, that we don't share, share values. And, uh, so, you know, like a lot of moments, I'm sure you've heard from a lot of people there. Most, most of the time, uh, if our low moments don't kill us, they turn into something really valuable. Yeah. So it made you kind of solidify almost like core values on who you would work with and who you yeah. would work and, and who I was going to try to go after and, com and commit to working with. Yeah. yeah. Even if it meant turning down business, it you was bet. a, you know, it became just something that you would feel good about in the end. Yeah. I, I, I it happened and it happens all the time. And I, I, um, again, no need to name names, but I was uh, offered something very recently that was, a lot of money to work with a company that I didn't believe in what they do. And, uh, I had to say no. Yeah. Yeah. We had this conversation the other day with one of the our staff and it was like, if anyone doesn't treat you well, we don't want to work with them. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, not yeah. even us. Like if they treat us and not you, then yeah. it's not yeah. something we want right. to work with. So, That's right. you know, I appreciate, yeah. The, um, there's a line you have to draw. Um, what about on the flip side? I know you've had a, several decade career, so it's hard to choose <laughs> one, but um, what sticks out is, is a proud moment for you. Yeah, I think there are probably many, many. In fact, I'm sure there are that, that at least I'm somewhat proud of, but I do remember distinctly the feeling that I got when uh, the UPS uh, uh, guy rolled up a couple boxes of duct tape marketing. It was the first time I'd seen uh, my published book. Um, you know, that was, um, I still get chills thinking about it, you know, and I, I and, and you know, what's kind of fun is, is, um, uh, the, the new book, uh, actually I was speaking at a conference in, um, Atlanta, um, and, uh, or actually Savannah, Georgia, and the new book, um, we had some ship there from the conference and that was the first time I'd seen it. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, somebody commented on, you know, my facial expression when I opened up the book and that, you know, it was clear that I, you know, had a lot of joy in that. And even though it was my sixth time, um, there is something about that. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Where should we, I just want to be the first one to thank you, John. Um, yeah. I've um, admired your work from afar for a long time and, and what you do. So thanks for, for putting all that out. I remember seeing in the bookstore duct tape marketing and thought it was a cool looking <laughs> cover. Um, yeah. Way back when I remember jotting a note, if I ever write a book, maybe I should look at that cover <laughs> for inspiration, um, not to copy it. But um, where should we point people towards online? Obviously, you can go to you know, ducttapemarketing.com, check out all your books, your podcasts. Where else should we point people towards? Well, if they, just want to, um, if they just want to find information about this book and hear interviews like this, other interviews like this as well, um, it's just selfreliententrepreneur.com. And as you said, duct tape marketing is D-U-C-T. T A P E marketing.com. And of course, if, if you just want to pick up a copy of the book, they're available pretty much anywhere you buy books. Um, I always like to give a plug for that local community bookstore. Uh, hopefully you have one of those still in your town, but uh, obviously all the online retailers as well. self entrepreneur.com. John, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. it my pleasure. I love talking about this stuff, as you can tell. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. Right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.